I asked myself, what is love? Where does it come from? My story has a little bit of romance in it, but it's also about a new way of thinking and a new way of life. My name is Cassine. My parents are from Chile. They got together in Sweden and then I came along and was born in Malmö. They married when I was around six years old. And as they were both in their second marriages, I had much older siblings who moved out soon. And I grew up as if I were an only child. During my childhood, we moved around many times and my parents got divorced when I was eight and me and my mom moved back to Malmö because my sisters live here. Uh, my father would come and visit us from time to time, but he didn't live up to his promises and I felt a bit neglected by him. And eventually when I, around the time I was 12, uh, my mom broke up the contact with him and so I didn't talk to him anymore either. I didn't get much religion when I was growing up. Uh, one of the reasons that my parents divorced was that my father became religious, but uh, that didn't make anything better at home. My sisters were also active at the time in a Pentecostal church, so I went with them for, to church for a while when I was around eight to nine years old. And I remember that there was a big youth group and there were tons of kids and it was a lot, a lot of fun. My mom doesn't believe in organized religion, even though she believes in God. Uh, she has had two husbands who were Christian and they wanted to come across as spiritual, but away from the public, they were anything but spiritual. I was baptized as a child in a Catholic church and I don't remember thinking about God in my younger years, uh, but I later found my mom's Bible and I had drawn crosses in it and written, uh, God is love. But as a teen, I didn't think there was a God. And every time my mom would tell me we were gonna do such and such, or you know, when you make plans, uh, she would say, God willing. And I would say, no, mom, Dios no existe. Uh, it's like, mom, God doesn't exist. So I was very bitter because of what had happened in my family and about what I didn't have or couldn't do and I guess I was very affected by the divorce and all the moving so I was resentful and angry on the inside and I guess it's also part of being a teenager uh, but I was a good kid anyways and I was careful not to get into too much trouble and I tried to do well in school and I had yeah pretty good friends because my mom had a low paying job and was a single parent we struggled a lot with money and I had, I had the feeling that I needed to take care of things at home, so that made me grow up and mature much faster. And when I was 12 or so, I started doing housekeeping at a hotel on the weekends, and pretty soon I got my own job there. I wanted to help out with breakfast at the hotel, and soon I started to work in the kitchen. And by the time I was 16, I was in charge of the breakfast on the weekends, and I kept working there throughout high school. I was even working there during weekdays and on my holidays, so I worked pretty hard. Eventually, I got a job at a cafe in Copenhagen, and soon after, I met a guy from El Salvador and we started dating. We fell in love, and after a few months, he had to go back to his country to sort out some paperwork. While he was gone, my sister invited me to some Bible studies, and they were especially for young people, so I went. And there I met some special people like Don and Andrea Milares and Jonathan Carlson and others. And the studies were about relationships and marriage. They talked about how God in Jesus offered his life for humanity because he loves us so much. And I learned that he wants to have a relationship with us where we respond back in love to him. He wants to be with us forever. Marriage should be the same, uh, a relationship that lasts throughout life, where two people love one another and are faithful and willing to sacrifice for the other. 
and I thought this was wonderful. Before this, I didn't believe much in marriage and I thought that we could just live together and there's no need to sign a paper and we can just be with each other for the rest of our lives. But when I heard the Bible's concept of marriage, I thought this is what I want for the relationship I had with my boyfriend. I like the thought of us being one and I was so in love with my boyfriend and I yearned for this kind of permanent relationship that comes from God. And this was such a beautiful ideal and it made so much sense that I thought it cannot come from somewhere on earth. It must be supernatural. So I came to the conclusion that God must be real. My sister, who had already started going to church by this time, invited me to go with her. And I was curious, so I went. And I really liked it and enjoyed it, so I kept on going. And uh, one thing, though, that really clicked uh, once I started understanding Christianity uh, was this, that I was trying to be good to people and always trying to please and make them happy, but they did not respond in the same way. I wanted to be loving, but it didn't seem fair. I mean, who wants to be a sucker? Uh, but I learned that revenge is God's. I could treat those people well, no matter what they did to me, and God will take care of justice. It gave me confidence to be who I was and still have dignity. My boyfriend returned to Sweden and we moved in together. And I was hoping that he would be as excited about God as I was, but he wasn't. And still I went to church, but uh, not so regularly. And even so, I got baptized in the summer of 2010. Uh, I know now that I shouldn't have gotten baptized then. I had many things in my life that were not right, but God is very patient. Little by little, my boyfriend and I started to drift apart. Uh, he was saying that I changed too much since I started going to church, and he didn't like that, and he said some very hurtful things to me. One day, we had a fight, and he said he had enough. And I thought, me too, actually. And I was relieved. It was as if a weight fell off my shoulders. And he soon moved out. And I started listening to more sermons online, and I read the Bible, and started also to get some more friends at church. And my life was just filled with more meaning and peace. There was another thing that bugged me a lot, because I had learned that Saturday is God's holy day of rest, the Sabbath. And I had worked on Saturdays, even after I got baptized, because I was really a coward, and I didn't dare to ask my employer to give me Saturdays off, and especially since I was working in the food service. By now, I was also studying to be a chef, and was working off my practicum at a restaurant. I was one year away from graduation, so I felt even more pressure. So I made friends with a Christian lady, and when she found out that I was working on Saturdays, she said to me, what are you doing, my sister? And she encouraged me to stand up for my beliefs and to stop compromising. And I wanted to do that because I had such a bad conscience. And also my good friends Klaus and Teresa gave me a book called The Seventh Day Ox. And it is about a Christian minister who was in a Soviet labor camp. And even though he faced tremendous challenges, God worked a miracle for him to be able to keep the Sabbath. So I explained the situation to my boss and he arranged for me to take every other Saturday off. And he said to me, this is the best I can do. Don't be stupid and ruin your career. Uh, and my colleagues were also putting pressure on me to come to work as usual. The Saturday when I was supposed to work, I said to myself, I'm going to take my chances with God. I wrote a message to my boss saying, I hope you understand why I'm doing this. I am ready to take the consequences for my actions. I turned off the phone and I went to church and I spent the day there with my friends. I have not worked Saturdays since. The next day, I dreaded to go to work and the chef there was very upset and he punished me by asking me to do the most menial tasks and I thought I would have to give up my schooling but through a series of miracles my counselor reassigned me to the school cafeteria where I would only work weekdays. Eventually I was able to get a well-paying internship at another restaurant 
I got Saturdays off and managed to put away money for some travel plans. And not only did I graduate from chef school, but I was also able to get some amazing work and study and missionary experiences in Finland, the US, Brazil, Sweden, Norway, and Greece. And the latest news is that I'm engaged to be married to a wonderful Christian guy. And I'm convinced that it is only by making God the foundation of our marriage that it will have the best chances to last and blossom. God has been so good to me, and everything that I thought I had lost has been replaced with something so much better. And I have found true happiness and peace. And He is my Father, and so far, He has not let me down.